Hello and welcome to Model Trains Forever. Today I'm going to show you how to build this very attractive, useful and visually interesting truss or trestle bridge supposed to be of iron construction for your HO scale layout. And quite literally it costs pennies to build. It costs pennies to build assuming that you already have paint and glue and a craft knife but that's really all it takes and what it's made primarily of in fact entirely of except for the base are coffee stirrers these wooden coffee stirrers you get at your coffee shop your Starbucks your everywhere I have a friend who owns a coffee truck and she gives them to me when they're used so this literally cost me nothing now you begin by drawing out on a piece of cardboard or wood the shape desired to build the bridge. The bottom here is made from a piece of cardboard from an old box that's reinforced by a couple of double layers of the coffee stirrers. You can see that underneath here that I put that in there to give it a visual interest which will be in my case Fleischmann, old Fleischmann profi track with the pre-ballasted plastic road bed. A jig is used to draw out and map out the design. You can see that here. I didn't particularly go pedantic regarding angles and shapes, I just basically got what I want and then this was used to build the two sides which I put together as you can see here with the Fleischmann Profi track on the bottom. You can use any track yourself that you want. You can see the uprights or the diagonal uprights are singular while the top and main bottom structures are doubled. This is to also create strength. This is a remarkably strong structure when it's built. You will need a sanding block also, a light one, just to sand down the wood on these, to take any burrs or grain off them, but it doesn't really matter as I'm not looking for perfection in my models, I'm just looking for something that's inexpensive, and this is what this channel is about anyway. I'm resurrecting an old Continental HO layout that was in the attic in boxes, and I need some bridges to begin with. I'm not going to spend a fortune building bridges that you pay for online or in the shops, I think the prices today of model railway equipment is absolutely obscene and driving many people out of the hobby. And I'm bringing this back to the heyday of when people used to build and scratch build for themselves from basically what they could find. Now you can see the finished structure here and what it looks like. It's quite impressive. It looks the business. It doesn't have all rivets all over it. It doesn't may not be prototypically 100% correct but it's fine for me. It's painted with a combination of red oxide primer, black spray paint, and gray. And I'll tell you why I use these colors. First of all, not surprisingly, I begin by painting it with the red oxide primer. These paints are cheap and easy to get and available everywhere. Give it a decent coating. This is to create the rusted metal effect that many of these old bridges have. In fact, one of the things I like most about model railways is the fact that character is much more apparent in rustic or run down model layouts and that's what I'm aiming for when I build my old one or resurrect my own one I should say and therefore rusted bridges look great to me they also have a nostalgic and a, a far more interesting look than a brand new plastic bridge out of the box that's been built and you paid a fortune for once all the sides are coated properly I would then worry about the shading and highlighting. Now this is quite easily done. A lot of these kind of techniques come from wargaming. What I basically want to do is to create a darker area on the lower points so where they jut out. So underneath girders that protrude from the main structure, the underside of the horizontal or semi-diagonal or diagonal struts will have a darker tone underneath them. And this is done by simply spraying the black paint along the bottom surface while the model is upside down and this gives you a free shadow or a shadow with very little work again i'm not looking to get on the cover of modeling magazines i'm not looking to win awards or prizes i want something that works looks good and gives me the satisfaction of building it now for the top part the opposite applies you want to have a lighter shade of the red oxide now not having an airbrush is not a problem. What you can do is in the spray mix above, you can mix a gray or an off-white with the red oxide primer as it's being sprayed. And this gives you a tone. Now at first it seems tricky, there's too much gray. Play with it. 
Remember, this cost you almost nothing to build. You can always build another one if you get it wrong. Spray the combinations of the red oxide and the white or the off-white or the grey until you get what you want. And this is what I wanted. A bridge that wasn't perfect, that had interesting tones and highlights on it. I wasn't bothered at all that the even paint wasn't correct because that's how real these bridges are in real life, especially on secondary railroad. So if you like this and you enjoyed it, please subscribe.